All right, kids, 5.3, welcome. This is going to be the properties of logarithms. This is going to be a, what always ends up being a kind of confusing lesson, but there are strict rules to follow, and as you follow them every time, you will always get it right. All right, so we're gonna start off with the base properties, and these properties of logarithms, that works for all logarithms. That works for log base two, log base five, log base 10, log base E, and it's gonna work for log base B. Any logarithm that I talk about, all of these properties remain. They all stay constant. So it doesn't matter what log I'm talking about, these properties all are the exact same property. All right, so, First of all, our first property is called the product rule. So this is going to be the logarithm of a product. So something along the lines of log of whatever base you want, I don't really care, log of x times y. So it's the log of a product. And this product says, or this property says, if I have the log of a product here, I can rewrite it as the sum of the two separate logs. So if I had this log of x times y, I could rewrite it as log of x plus log of y. Very simple property. Uh, there's things that people do. I don't even want to say what people do accidentally because this is the property. And if I see you do anything other than this, that means you didn't listen to me. That's how I'm going to take it. Okay, so the log of a product can equal the sum of the two separate logs. and Or two, it could be three. It could say, okay, let's say if I had the log of 3xyz if I wanted to. Well, this is just the product of four different things. So I can write it as the log of 3 plus the log of x plus the log of y, and plus the log of z, just splitting up all of my products into the sum of separate logs. Okay, and then that's one of the, our most basic properties. There's only three here that we deal with, but there's lots of different problems that we can um, see here. All right, so get rid of that. Let's look at the quotient rule. So again, this is the logarithm of a quotient, so something along the lines of log of x over 2, or x over y, or x over whatever, or 3 over 5, something along that line. The property states that if I have the quotient, or the logarithm of a quotient, well, it's kind of might what you'd be thinking of. It's going to look a lot like the addition one, only in this case, the log of a quotient is going to equal the difference of the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. So in my case up here at the top, I say, okay, the log of x over 2 is going to be rewritten as the log of x minus the log of 2. Oh, and don't forget, I didn't mention this yet, but these properties go the other way as well. If you start with a sum, you can write it as a product, or if you start as a difference, you can write it as a quotient. All right, so I could say, okay, what's the log? And now I've got two properties to deal with. I can say, okay, what's the log of 2x over y? Well, I can rewrite it as a difference using my quotient rule. I could say it's the log of 2x minus the log of y. But now I have a product in this first piece that I need to take care of. And I could say this is the log of 2 plus the log of x minus the log of y. And then I get a, an expanded version, right? So this is called expanding the logarithm. But what I was saying a second ago is I could actually start with, hey, if I had the log base 3 of x minus the log base 3 of z, I could rewrite this as the log base 3 of the quotient x over z. So I could start with the expanded version. I can rewrite it as a single 
logarithm rather than two different logarithms. All right, so what's our last one here? Oops, here we go, get back to that. Our last property is going to be the power rule. So this is saying if I had the logarithm of something to an exponent, All right? So the logarithm of, well, I'd like to use my example up here, the logarithm of x squared, All right? Technically, it is a product of two things, but the power rule is a much simpler, faster process to think about. I can say, well, because it's a log of x squared, this property tells me I can just bring the exponent out to the front, which this would be 2 times the logarithm of x. That would be a simplified version here. Or if I had, notice, notice now I have all three properties to, to play with here. I could say it's, if what if I had the log of x, y squared over z? Well, some of you might get to the point where you can just write it out in one step. But I want to show kind of multiple steps here. I said, okay, I have a quotient, so I'm going to write it as a difference. So I'm going to say it's the log of xy squared minus the log of z. But now I have a product in that first piece, so I'm actually going to write it as a sum, log of x plus log of y squared minus the log of z, but now I have a power, and that's another one of my rules that I have to get rid of. So I'm gonna actually get rid of that power. I'm gonna say it's the log of x plus two log of y minus log of z, and there we have a an expanded version, an expanded logarithm. I actually have a couple examples on the next page, so I kind of was doing examples just to show you each particular property as we go, um, but what if I wanted you to rewrite this logarithm as an expansion, right? So try to do this before I do it. So you can pause right now if you need to, or if you're really quick at this, you can get this done pretty quickly. But I'm going to go ahead. So if you've paused already, good. All right, so I can rewrite this as a product. I'm going to go ahead and do all the middle steps here, even though I normally don't. I would say it's the log of, and I already showed you how to split up four, so splitting up three products is not too bad. Log of eight plus log of x plus log of y squared. Now the problem is you're not done yet because you have this square. So I have to take care of that using the power rule. Log of eight plus log of x plus two log of y. Now. These particular properties are actually pretty useful. Um, we could actually use these to evaluate logarithms by hand without calculators, or we could use it to help us figure out, well, what, like solving an equation. That's going to come up in the next section. So right now, we're just looking at the properties and how we might be able to use them. All right, so let's try the next one here. I hope that's what you got. Um, let's try the natural log, and remember, all of those log properties work for natural log as well. So I'm going to rewrite this a little bit to make it look a little bit more similar to what you might see in a book. So natural log of square root x squared plus 5 all over x. So this one's a little bit more challenging because there's some things that people are going to want to do that are really illegal right here. So first of all, I'm going to look at this as a quotient, so I'm going to write the difference. Natural log of square root x squared plus 5 minus natural log of x. Well, some people might think they're done right here, but this is where it gets tricky. The square root is actually an exponent. This is actually the natural log of x squared plus 5 to the 1 half power minus ln of x, which means I need to use that power rule and bring out the 1 half, oops, I don't need that, multiplied by the natural log of x squared plus 5 minus the natural log of x, and you're done. Now here's where people just start, they just stop listening to their teacher. 
they try to split this sum up. They say, oh, it's actually the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of 5. But that's not true because there's no property that says that. Our property deals only with the product, not with the sum. All right, so this is actually your final answer. You cannot go any farther than this. All right, so this particular problem is going to go in the other direction. Now, normally this first piece would probably actually be written as, as 5 ln of x to know that you need to put that 5 into the x there, so it would be x to the fifth. But I know that's not actually how this one is written, so we're going to start with this. All right, so let's see what this is going to have to do. Um, I want to write this as a single logarithm, so I need to look at things in parentheses first. And this is not in parentheses, so I'm not going to do anything this, to this just yet. And the 2 is kind of there for now. I don't really want to deal with it yet either. But I do have the logarithm. Actually, I have the sum of two logarithms. And the sum of two logarithms is going to be ln of the product x, y. All right, so that's pretty easy. Um, now, I can't really get rid of, I can't do division yet because I have a 2 here. So I have to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to take natural log of x to the 5th. And I'm going to say it's minus the natural log of x, y squared. And for the most part, I'm going to be okay with leaving it like this. But I'm going to show you why I don't really like it to be left like this. Um, I can say, well, I mean this piece here, the x, y squared. Not the whole problem. The whole problem's not done yet. Then I'm going to get, okay, now I have a difference of two logarithms, so I can write it as the logarithm of a quotient, x to the fifth, over x, y. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you that actually this square goes with both x and y, so this actually x squared, y squared. And here technically, since we are doing a simplification process, we should probably simplify this. So x to the fifth over x squared, three x's are going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with natural log of x cubed over y squared, and that would be my final answer. All right, fully simplified, down to one logarithm, and no illegal math. That's the big thing. All right, so those are kind of the rewrite problems. Um, before I get to that next page there, I want to talk about this. There's going to be a lot of these problems. And I'm going to give you guys quite a few days on this particular lesson to really fully grasp all of these properties. And hopefully to the point where you don't actually have to look at the book anymore or your notes to figure out the properties. That they actually come to you just straight away. All right, so on the next page, you may have just seen this thing called the change of base. Well, in your calculator, um, you're only given you're only given these two buttons. You're given log and ln. This is log base 10, and this is log base e. But what happens if on your calculator, or they say, hey, figure this out. What is the log base 3 of 4? Well, you don't have a calculator button for log base 4 or log base 3, and this is not equal to log of 4. So you can't just plug this into your calculator straight away like, like if I just wanted to say, hey, what is the log of 4? That's easy. But log base 3 of 4, not quite as easy. So what, I, what we have is a change of base, and the reason we have this is one of the big reasons is so we can plug things in on our calculator. And the change of base formula says if I have the log base b of x, I can change it to any new base that I want. So if I had, I have an example here coming up, but I'm going to just kind of create one. If I had the log base 3 of 4, oh look, I did the one I said. And I need to plug this into my calculator. I want to use either the log base 10 or the log base e. Well, you'll notice up here, it's going to be log over log. Let's use base 10, right? Changing it to any base that I want. And it's going to be, notice where the x comes from. It's log base b of x. Well, that x is my 4. You notice how the x and the 4 are the same thing and the b and the 3. 
Well, that means they have to go in the same spots. So my x is my 4, and my b is my 3. And I can plug this into my calculator now. I can now do log base 3 of 4 just by doing the log of 4 divided by the log of 3, and I get approximately 1.262. Where before I couldn't do this in my calculator, now we can. All right, so what I have here is an example saying, okay, let's change this logarithm, the log base 2 of 5, something we can't plug into the calculator yet. Let's change it into a bunch of different logs. So first of all, let's change it into log base 5. Does this help you on a calculator? Absolutely not. But I can write it as log base 5. So changing it to log, ba log base 5 just says, okay, it's log base 5 over log base 5 of, well, log base 5, well, my, my x is my 5, and my b is my 2, and you get this. And here's what, to me, this particular example is really, really interesting to me because this becomes, log base 5 of 5, one of our properties says if our things are the same, it just becomes a 1 over the log base 5 of 2. Now here's what, to me, some of you guys aren't going to get this, don't worry. Some of you are. This is what's cool to me. Log base 2 of 5 ends up being the reciprocal of log base 5 of 2. Really interesting to me. Um, why? I don't know. I'm a math nerd, right? You guys know that already. Uh, so log base 2 of 5 becomes the reciprocal of, one, or reciprocal of log base 5 of 2. Um, what if, though, I actually wanted to plug things into my calculator? And this is more along the lines of what we do in higher level math. We use base E all the time. So base E, well, that's just ln over ln. Well, guess what? It's just 5 and 2 because that was our original thing in the first place. It's x is my 5 and b is my 2. So it's ln 5 over ln 2. Here's something I want to do before I erase this page. I don't care. We already um, we could figure out this calculation as a decimal. Actually, might as well. Let's do it. I'll do it right now. So ln of 5, ln of 5 divided by ln of 2 is approximately 2.322. Now, here's what's interesting. This change of base formula works for all bases. So if I wanted to change this to base 10, I can say it's log of 5 divided by log of 2. And these things are equal. They're exactly the same thing. If I plugged in log of 5 divided by log of 2, I'm going to get the same answer because it's, it's rewriting log base 2 of 5. So that, again, is another one of those interesting things to me. How is, how is the log base 2 of 5 equal to um, log base 5 of 5 uh, divided by log base 5 of 2? How is that equal to ln of 5 divided by ln of 2? How is that equal to the log of 5 divided by the log of 2? All of these things are equal, and it's just so interesting in how the logarithms are all connected like this. And this last question, change it to base 1. You notice I'm not doing anything because you can't. Okay, this is a trick question. You can't change things to base 1. Base 1 in, exp in logarithms don't make sense. Basically saying this, if I said log base 1 of 3 equals x, then you're saying 1 to what power equals 3? Well, you can try all you want. You'll never find a number that taking 1 to that exponent will equal 3 because 1 to any exponent is always 1. So this is a nonsensical statement. It's, it's, it's a nonsense. You can't do it. All right. So changing things to base 1, it's a trick question. It's meant to be funny. It's meant to actually help you understand that you can't do it. All right. So don't do it. Um, I'm going to put a smiley face right there because I think it's interesting. All right. Guess what? That's it. Uh, this is a pretty short video, as you might notice, but the assignment's a little bit longer because I really want you guys to focus on doing the problems. And don't just think about doing the 10 or so problems that I assigned. Try thinking about doing some of the other ones that are in the textbook as well. 
All right, have a good evening. I will see you guys tomorrow.